Hello, I want to take a moment and look at Prop 22. So how did we do? Now, if we look at what's going on around the world, you'll see that different companies have, uh, different countries rather, have handled this differently. But the bottom line is decisions like Prop 22 that were on the ballot in California affect each and every one of us throughout throughout our lives. And specifically now, as more and more companies, as we see specifically tech companies, are hiring H-1B visa holders over local citizens who are qualified for the roles, which is a violation of the H-1B status agreement through the federal government, but are also pushing those employees that they are not filling in the executive and upper, upper management roles into contract and vendor status. In a contract and vendor status, we used to see that individuals that were placed in that status would get a nice package. It would be significantly more than a, a full-time employee on site, and it would include uh, allowances for such items as medical benefits and um, retirement tuckaways, and that's 100% gone. Right now, if you get a contractor or vendor role, you are blessed to be able to participate in a project and know that you are disposable. You do not get extra money for health insurance, and certainly there's none left over to even save on your own for retirement. So this is setting up our entire economy to fail. So even if you have a great FTE with the tech company, what does your neighbor have? So let's take a look at how this fared out. So Prop 22, as you will remember, was on the general election of November 3, 2020. Prop 22 exempts app-based. So if the instructions came from a robot, essentially, app-based transportation and delivery companies from providing employee benefits to certain drivers. So it had its pros and cons. And of course, if you want to read this, it's um, the highlight is, is up above so you can uh, gather more information on it. Uh, so what, what we looked at is when this came forward, it was really a stance um, to, to let people know that you're valued. And then if you're being treated as an employee, you need to be compensated with the, an, as an employee. And in the United States, being an employee comes with a series of protections. Now, we went over last week, Department of Fair Employment and Housing and EEOC. And although, honestly, those are failing um, departments and agencies at this point, at least there are protections in place where work does has have rules. And if you move outside of that for the private attorney, you can't have those enforced. However, in this case, what we saw is, is drivers themselves got confused in the process because of the campaigns that went directly to them, campaigns that went on billboards and TVs, telling people that you do want to be your own independent person, you want to be an independent contractor, an employee is bad. Yeah, but who spent the money telling us an employee is bad? The employer, the employer who wanted to get around the system. And I might point out as well, California specifically, other states as well, California got stuck with a massive bill when the world shut down for COVID and Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and all these others that were lumped in these app-based businesses had not been treating their, their staff as employees. Therefore, they didn't set aside employee benefits such as paying into the unemployment insurance pool. Therefore, when all those uh, employers were laid off, the federal government and California had to come up with specific rules just for these type of workers so that they could get unemployment insurance. Again, that is not free. That comes out of an insurance pool that companies who have done the right thing over the years have paid into. Now, Uber knows how to pay into this because they had a whole FTE staff of engineers and marketers and all of that that they paid unemployment insurance into for years. They also paid them very high salaries. And yet, those who did the work on the road didn't have that same benefit. So, so the gig economies spent over a million dollars and on what I saw, the estimates were significantly higher than that, lobbying Congress in order to, to remove these protections, to allow them to have gig workers as contractors, as independent workers that had the freedom as quote unquote to do what they want, even though you don't have the freedom. You have a freedom to either turn on the app or not turn on the app. So you have an opportunity to work for them or not work for them. And that's the extent of it. But they wanted to make it sound 
that there was immense freedom in that. In fact, there's more punishments built in their freedom. If you turn down rides, you don't get as many. It, you can't pick and choose what's going to be better. You might get a ride uh, one way for 100 miles, but then you have to pay for your own um, gas and mileage back. There's a, a lot of challenges within that. So what do we want to look at? What is the most expensive asset that most businesses have? And, you know, on, on beside infrastructure that appreciates, the depreciation asset is the vehicle. So if you can shift that vehicle responsibility into another individual, onto another individual, then you're not, not only not paying into the, the whole system that um, for employee protections and your share of the taxes associated with that, but you're also not having to um, buy a car at a top rate, maintain it, pay insurance on it, and depreciate it. That is burden is also placed on quote unquote the sucker who was willing to um, drive for your platform in this case. And so what I've seen is um, doing taxes for individuals is a number of people it may have even even made um, close to six figures um, in 2020, as an example, even with the world shut down. But honestly, they worked almost 100 hours a week driving their own car 80, 80 to 100 miles. And during that time, uh, they had to change tires, oils, um, crack in the window. One had a fender bender and couldn't drive for a week, and that's a loss of income. You know, all these scenarios run up in addition to the gas in the car, the insurance and the big ticket, the wear and the care of the quick run to the dumpster with the vehicle. It, it's, it's really a shame what has happened there. So as we move forward, how do we know this to be true? We've got a company, Amazon, and as you see the massive amounts of uh, vans on the streets, many of those are not owned by Amazon. In fact, remember out of the gate, rather than having the UPS and the the FedEx type vans, they leverage the services of the US Postal Service for that last mile delivery. And I remember the president stepping up and saying, hey, this isn't equitable, but it was at least something to the post office. So Amazon decided to start their own fleet. And we can read this here. If you're a, cus if you're a customer obsessed person, people person who loves coaching teams in a high speed, ever changing environment, become an Amazon delivery service partner. Look at that, you can be a partner. It is an ideal opportunity for you. As an owner, you will operate with 20 to 40 vans that you purchase, that you depreciate, that you maintain, and you have the headache of 40 to 100 employees that we will not have the headache of. We, Amazon, will deal solely with you as a vendor, and you will depreciate the assets, and you will deal with all the human resource headaches. You'll be fully responsible for hiring and developing a team of high performing, hardworking employees while we take care of getting you set up and ready to operate out of an Amazon delivery. It, essentially a franchise is what they're setting up, even though when I was approached in 2018, summer of 2018, to go ahead and take on a franchise, um, that, that word was never taken. Uh, down here, I do see start an Amazon delivery um, a franchise. So we're starting to see this term come up as calling it what it is, but Amazon does not refer to it as much. So why is a trillion dollar company with Amazon um, being so kind as to share a piece of their company? Because it's a piece that devalues fast and it is the biggest headache they have. So if they can give this off to other people or other businesses or build small businesses, it looks good because people are not awake as to what is actually happening. So what happened to Prop 22? Prop 22 did pass in California. And as we look at all the voting rules and regulations, it is suspect how many votes it actually got. However, that being said, they did a great job pushing, manipulating, and even getting voters themselves to pass this proposition so that, um, so that they can maintain their autonomous nature within in their role which is not what happened. So here we've got it coming up. We're now in, in May of 2021, and it just didn't work out so well. So let's see here. The Guardian 
posted this article today and it's called a slap in the face California Uber and Lyft drivers criticize pay cuts. So what is the reality of what happened driver site reduction in mileage rates from LEX a major source of rides and say company stimulus packages are traps. So here's more of a reality of what happened instead of becoming full time employees where they could plan vacations with their families have medical insurance that protected themselves and their families and have a 401 set aside also having um, unemployment insurance and basic taxes paid by the employer all of that maintained shift to them plus the bottom fell out uber and lyft drivers in california are up in arms about the effects of prop 22 since a controversial state law went into effect in january after an aggressive and expensive lobbying campaign in favor of the ballot amendment among the most recent changes drivers say is a reduction in mileage rates from Los Angeles airport. Now, if any of you have driven anywhere in LA, you know that going a mile can take you an hour and that would be at midnight. It, it's just an, an unbelievable gridlock. Alvaro, um, a driver for Uber and Lyft in Los Angeles area said the airport mileage rate for Uber was reduced from 65 cents to 32 cents a mile. So we're looking at more than a 50% pay cut there. And mileage is one of the biggest compensations that you get. And that Uber removed the multiplier option for drivers to set up their own prices. No driver in the right mind would go to LAX for 32 cents a mile, said this individual. They took everything away, the ability to see what the passengers were getting, uh, passengers they're getting, and the ability to set their own prices, the multiplier. Prop 22 was authorized by Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and Instacart and carved out an exception for themselves in Assembly Bill AB5, a landmark labor law in California that would have forced ride share and delivery companies to treat drivers as employees. Under Prop 22, workers and gig economies, gig companies are still classified as contractors without access to employee rights such as minimum wage, unemployment benefits, health care, and bargaining. An Uber spokesperson person said the airport changes and rebalancing rates are a part of a pilot program to improve airport pickups. How is that a pilot program that in any way makes it better for riders or drivers? If riders, um, if drivers don't want to do it because it, it doesn't even pay the basic fees, which we've already just seen dis decline significantly since 2018, then the riders aren't going to have anybody to pick them up. The multiplier option was provided to drivers by Uber in January last year in attempt, see this is that multiplier, to show the government that, hey, we're good guys, we're letting them choose their and control. In an attempt to prove drivers are independent contractors by granting them more flexibility as Uber and gig, economy, gig companies were fighting to exempt their workers from AB5, Uber argued the reversal was due to drivers turning down too many rides. So because rides, um, they, they told the government, look, these people can actually choose their independent. Here, we're going to give them an app so that we can prove this. As soon as it passed, then they went ahead and took this back because once Uber drivers could actually choose in advance the ratings of the riders to make sure that they were going to uh, be respectful and also see what the fair offering would be to see if it'd be worth their time and the uh, wear and tear on their car, then Uber drivers started denying the rides. And they did this for a number of rides. Many would work together to deny a certain number of rides because once you do, then Uber would offer more money to those drivers because of the decreased um, demand, right? And, and so when not as many accept it, then Uber would offer a little bit more money, a little bit more money in order to entice and finally get somebody to take the ride. And so drivers would work together and at least agree to only making a minimum wage. They didn't even go for the sky or block out the company. They just said, at least pay us a minimum wage. And then this was taken away once the government looked the other way. Through the multiplier option, the multiplier option and features for drivers to turn down unwanted rides has largely been revoked. This person argued passenger fees were actually increased by Uber and Lyft. So they're getting more fees from the passenger and then also paying the drivers less. So you can read more about this article, but pretty much this is an example of we are big business. We run slaves for our company. We don't have to 
carry the burden. We even put the burden on the back of those slaves. And this is the economy we like to live in. Again, this was voted for in California and people did not even study enough that were involved in the, that affected them on a day-to-day -day basis. We've got to pay attention to why things like this come up why the proposition would get on the ballot and why the company that you think would be the best advocate for it would spend millions of dollars against it and in fact not supporting the people it wants it to work for but supporting its own pockets. This is another example that when things get on the ballot it's a big push to be there. We've got to wake up and again this isn't just about you or your neighbor. It's about all of us because as drivers don't make enough, they go through cars, they don't have a next car, they can't continue working. They're gonna be on unemployment and they don't have anything for their retirement, pushing us into a retirement cliff throughout the United States. Okay, this is the world we live in.